No matter how grown up they get, they'll always be your baby. Today, adult children are going home to surprise their parents. Welcome to the Humankind Connection. For a lot of us, the global pandemic has led to long absences from those closest to us. That was the case for Coley and his parents, Michael and Cynthia. I called them to talk about the incredible surprise that brought this family back together again. <laughs> This is what it looks like when you haven't seen your only son in 10 months. Coley and his parents are very close. As a sports reporter, his job requires him to travel often. No matter where he is, his parents always make the trip to see him. That's why he decided to hatch a plan to see them. Are you ready for a surprise? Let's get a surprise going. Coley and his mom and dad jumped on a video call with me to give me the background story on the surprise. You guys look great. All right, we're official now. So tell me about where you live and how long it's been since you saw your mom and dad. Been in Chicago for the past year or so, a little over a year, and it's been really since January since I've seen my parents. Um, like everyone else, or a lot of people with this pandemic, we've been trying to be careful. He came in and he saw my surprise and began to laugh because he thought that the gig was up. But I knew that his mom hadn't discovered that it was him. And so I said, Shh, you know, cause you still got, she's got to get her surprise too, right? Like I really had a big surprise. And so I didn't want to spoil the surprise for her. So I told him, Shh, wait until she finally uh, turns around to try to pick, ask me what was that noise and so when she did as she saw him I mean it was just all pandemonium <laughs> after that. <laughs> it had been so long you know we just don't go for months and months and months without seeing him. Usually we can go up to see him wherever he is if he can't get here but I was surprised as was obvious <laughs> and I didn't know I was screaming and <laughs> jumping up and down until he showed me the video. <laughs> I actually thought I was being pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you acted like, all of you guys acted like, as parents who love their son would. All of us were talking, Michael, about your like loud shriek. You were like, <laughs> and, <laughs> Since Coley is a reporter by trade, he recorded the entire moment. Okay, so a few days ago, I decided to finally go get a COVID test my first time. Came back negative. And since it came back negative, I decided to go for a little drive. That's right, I decided to come to Atlanta, Georgia, which is of course my hometown. Only thing, my parents did not know that I was coming. Are you ready for a surprise? Let's get a surprise going. just a wonderful thing. Um, I've got a birthday coming up on Friday and I was wondering if I would get to see him, you know? And, uh, and I said, well, I had just resigned myself to the fact that I probably wouldn't get to see him until maybe sometime next year. Um, and so when that door opened and I saw him, I, it was just uh, a real big surprise and I had a really warm feeling inside. How about you, Cynthia? Well, I've been wanting to see him. As he said, it's been January since we've seen him. And we usually get to see each other at least like quarterly or whatever, since he's working in other places. And when I turned around, I didn't hear the, the, the uh, sounder because of the alarm, because the television was on, I guess. I didn't hear. And I turned around and he was just there. <laughs> And I thought, oh my God, no. And I thought, oh, what do I have on a mask? Let me get a mask. <laughs> he said I said that too. <laughs> I didn't remember. <laughs> oh, I need to put on a mask. 
<laughs> Coley's mom has an underlying health condition, so it's important for her to wear her mask at all times. Cynthia and Michael have kept busy during quarantine. I've been practically in the house for all these months. I rarely go out. And I, when everything started getting bad, he called, Coley called and said, Mom, this is bad. Don't go. I, I was still working part time. He said, you don't need to do that anymore. So I just came home and stayed. So it's, it's been being in the house all the time. Well, we have our projects. My husband is a writer and I've been working on a book myself that I've been talking about for years. So we have our little periods where he goes upstairs and he writes and I sit downstairs and I write and then we get together. <laughs> but it's still not like being able to see Coley and he calls a lot. So I don't know what people did before you could have phones everywhere and see him at least on the phone. It's still not the same, but that helps. It, it's been a challenge for me too because um, <coughs> to, to my dad's point about touch, I I mean, it, it, I don't know how long it, it had been before I had gotten a hug from somebody, you know. The Harvey family rejoiced in the moment of finally being together. He requested my world famous shrimp and grits. So we had just finished dinner when he came in and I immediately uh, put the shelf cap on and, uh, and prepared him the, the uh, shrimp and, um, and grits. <laughs> I love that. That sounds very good. <laughs> he, he is a better cook. I'll say that he's a better cook than he was. They say this year has made them reflective and grateful. I guess that's the thing that resonates is that we're all going through such a period where a lot of, I have a lot of friends who've lost loved ones. I have friends who've lost their parents. And it, it, this is a moment at least to show when you have that opportunity to tell the people that you love that you love them and to see them and to reach out and maybe not touch them too much but at least reach <laughs> out to them do it when you can and 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 if you and, and in a safe and smart way create new memories uh, create memories about this time because it it's a reflective time it's a, a time to reflect and to grow to be better and so I, I would just encourage people to come out of this time period with new memories uh, that are based upon new uh, ways of um, loving your, your family and your friends. This is great. Oh. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It's good to see other people. Thank you. <laughs> yes, yes, human connection. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that was really nice to have some human interaction instead of just talking to my cat how it is most days. If you're a parent, is there any better feeling than seeing your kid for the first time in a long time? This mom lives 6,000 miles away from her daughter, Sarah, but those flowers behind her, you see, Sarah is about to hand deliver them to her mom on her birthday. The shock on her mom's face says it all. She hasn't seen Sarah in more than a year. Sarah had to travel for four days from Alaska to Japan and then on to Malaysia to make this special moment happen for her mom on her birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Sailor Henry Vargas Jr. also lives far from home. He was stationed in Guam when he plotted the ultimate birthday surprise for his dad, Henry Sr. It was all planned out, my wife and my son, they had a plan, you know, so I had no idea. Sitting there, I'm ordering and whatnot, and uh, 
all of a sudden they start clapping, you know, and it's just normal. People have birthdays in restaurants. I go, oh, someone's got a birthday here also. And when I turn to my side, I see my son, I say, no. It's almost like dreaming, you know, and it's like, wow, I couldn't believe it. It was a total surprise. They got, totally got me off guard. <laughs> yeah, he made me emotional <laughs> as soon as he had also got us looking at some tears out as well. It's, it's been two years since the last time I saw my dad or any other uh, family member from back home. Dana is disappointed that her son, specialist Ryan McAllister, is about to miss his second Thanksgiving at home with the family. Little did she know, Ryan was on the way home. I was sad. I remember I was cleaning the house. My daughter was, my, my husband had gone to the store and my daughter was doing something, so I was by myself. And I was cleaning the house and I just started to get really choked up. And I just was like, I had a little pity party for a few minutes. And I was like, you know, he, he was gone last year. I guess we're not going to see him this year. And then I said, you know what? This is military life. It's, it's just a day. And when we see him, we'll celebrate everything that we missed together. And, and I, you know, I cried. I wiped my tears. And I was like, all right, let's go. We got to get on with the day now. And we'll talk to him later. I don't know, it's just an indescribable feeling. You don't see your kid for months, which for us is not not a natural feeling as a family. Um, and when, you know, you, you really don't think you're gonna see them and then they just show up. It's like, it was very surprising. <laughs> Elizabeth Gray is under the impression she's making a virtual holiday card of sorts, a video to wish her son Jacob a Merry Christmas on the other side of the world. That's what she thinks, anyway. Producer Sarah Scanlon is reporting from her She Shed to show us how Jacob managed to pull off not one, but two epic surprises. Jacob, we love you. Merry Christmas. Oh. I'm Sarah Scanlon. I'm a producer for Military Kind, and we're part of the USA Today Network. And you know, everybody loves a good surprise military homecoming, right? Um, they go viral all the time. But what we do is we really love to reach out to the families and the people behind them and find out the backstory because more often than not, it, it makes the moment even more special when you hear, you know, about the family. How are you? Look hey, at Jacob. Us. Look at what you did. Oh. You guys got the whole crew. Navy diver first class Jacob Langner has always been close to his mom and big sister Becky. For the last three years, he's been stationed almost 6,000 miles away on Guam as a Navy diver. I personally don't keep track of the time because it's too painful. Um, you just gotta live by moment by moment kind of thing. Has always been very close. We've all been a very tight knit family and he's the yeah. missing piece of our puzzle. So. Um, we're very proud of him. He's been kicking butt in the world. More than proud. <laughs> We're so proud of him. He's just the good news is, is, you know, we get to see him. I mean, in the old days, it was just letter. I think the hard time was boot camp and just the letters. Yeah, um, not having video contact or. But you know, we still talk, even though we don't see him personally. We talk, you know, via Zoom or instant messenger. And technology makes the distance easier. So does the fact that Jacob loves his job. Well, actually, I, I, I don't know, I kind of always had like this, uh, this like feeling inside, just kind of like always yeah, he was wanted. Yeah, always going to go. <laughs> because uh, our family, our family has like a pretty rich history in the military. I actually wasn't going to join uh, the military right away. I was going to play this, this, the smart move, I guess, and uh, you know, go to college, get a degree. Then I thought I could 
do well there. But then I, as I started developing it, I don't know, it just immediately, I quickly changed my mind because it just, it just, I just wasn't. It felt right, yeah. Felt like my soul was dying when I was doing that. So I, uh, I was like, you know, I don't want to do this. So he enlisted and has loved it. While I was over there, it was fun, you know, I, I couldn't really come home too much, but I was able to travel all over like, East Asia and all around the world for work and all sorts of things. So I've been all sorts of cool places in the last few years. But spending many holidays away from home can get to a person. On most holidays, I was either like working, gone, or alone, basically. So, you know, like sometimes you spend with friends and stuff, but it's just not the same. You know, it's kind of weird spending all these holidays without anyone you really know. So as another Thanksgiving approached, Jacob mapped out a plan to surprise his family. Uh, I think the hardest part was I was trying to decide, well, first of all, I wasn't even sure I could do it initially. I kind of just left it up in the air because I wasn't sure because of the whole COVID situation and being in the Navy and stuff. I, didn't even, I wasn't even sure if I could actually go home. So I kind of left it in the air and then at last minute, I found out that, it, that it was possible to. So I was like, okay, perfect. I was like, I'm gonna try to surprise him, which is something I've never, I've never done before. So I was like, okay, we'll try this out. And then I think the hardest part was I was trying to figure out how to get everybody all at once. With, yeah, without everything worked out, so I was trying to, I was trying to under the under the radar figure out where everybody was and where everybody was going to be, without causing any kind of suspicion. And uh, I was able to get them. That, yeah, so I got them that night, and then I, I didn't even I didn't tell anybody until Brian like an hour before I got there. I was like, I was like, hey, which is yeah, which is I was like, hey, I just landed. I was like, can you you want to record me surprising everyone? I'm gonna be there in like an hour. And he's like, he's like, absolutely. So. so all of a sudden, you know, shoving a bite in my mouth, I hear the doorbell ring, and my dad's like, oh, maybe it's my stepbrother. And we're like, okay. And I look up, and my husband goes like, the <laughs> and I just <laughs> my dad enters the dancers the door, and then I'm like, shut up! And I just <laughs> run over there and just give him the biggest hug. And <laughs> I was like, oh my god. Oh, it's totally worth it. I wasn't, I wasn't sure I was gonna work out, and I've always, I've like seen the videos and stuff, but I've never actually done one. I was like, I was like, oh, we'll see how this works out. It's like I'm not gonna show up in uniform or anything, but I'll go say, say hello and stuff, and see, see what happens. And it, I'm really glad I did it because it was, uh, it made it just, it made it just so much better when you just do something like that rather than, you know, find it out. So I'm glad I did it. Yeah, it was probably the best surprise I've ever had in my entire life, that's for sure. <laughs> there was still someone left on Jacob's list he wanted to surprise. He was like, don't say anything to mom, I'm gonna get her tomorrow morning. And so I was like, well, we're my tradition with my family and my son, we could get our Christmas tree every uh, day after Thanksgiving. And so I was like, you want me to invite mom? We'll, uh, we'll do it there, you know, maybe I can figure something out. And so I saw him out of the, the corner of my eye and I was like, mom, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna record a video of you. That way we can send it to Jacob for Christmas, kind of like a, a virtual Christmas card. <laughs> and so she set that up that, well, didn't she? Stand in front of that tree and start talking. And so I saw Jacob running up in the back and I was just like, record, record. And so, <laughs> it was good. It was really good. Oh. Ah! No. <laughs> no. 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 You did me. I love you. Yesterday. Oh. <laughs> so what did you think when when you first felt someone behind you? What was your first thought? I had no clue. I mean she just reacts. That's her and, that's her go-to screen for everything. And he scared me at first. And then uh, as the video shows, I was just in shock. And then as all mothers, you just you know you're overwhelmed with emotion your heart hurts for your you just hurt you especially know, with just, covid we really 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 weren't expecting to see him we were no, kind of, of fact, we were I supposed to see him off. right before covid happened and of course because of it yeah. 
it, it sounded like it was going to be an impossibility. And so yeah. to have a, a we possible wait. thing happen out of the impossibility was, was magic. We just didn't expect to see him at all. And we just wrote it off. And with COVID and everything, like I said, uh, decorate, I feel like we already had Christmas just by him coming home. So it was definitely a blessing. I mean, it was, it was absolutely beautiful. She I'm just so, it. I'm just so happy I captured it. It all happened so fast. Yeah. And then to rewatch the video and it's like, oh, we put, that was the perfect capture. Like we get to relive. It's, it's one thing to be in the moment and love the moment, but you know, especially with video, we get to relive that moment over and over again. <laughs> And since we last spoke to that family, Jacob told us he got another promotion. So congratulations to Jacob. You know, sometimes the circumstances aren't as celebratory as the wonderful stories we've seen so far. But at life's lowest moments, that's when a surprise visit from your son or daughter can mean the most. This paramedic has a very special relationship with the patient he's transporting. He uh, served in the United States Navy, went to Vietnam. He, he also was a nurse for 20-something uh, years. Um, and uh, we, we have a very good relationship. Will looks up to his dad, Lamar. Despite living in different states, they've kept a very close relationship through visits and phone calls. One day, Lamar was involved in a serious accident. He ran off the road and uh, he hit a tree head on and uh, it broke his uh, right femur and his left ankle. And they airlifted him from uh, the scene for about 13 hours. We didn't know if he was alive or dead because we couldn't uh, locate him in the hospital because they don't have him as, in as his name, you know. Then no one could visit Lamar due to COVID restrictions. Just staying up to date on his condition proved challenging. Um, no one could uh, go visit him, no one could see him. He's hard of hearing, so he doesn't answer his phone as often as we would like. And so uh, it's hard getting reports from nurses because they're uh, you know, busy dealing with other patients and everything. After a tough week, the family learned Lamar would be transferred to a rehab facility. With the help of his boss, Will got to work on a plan to see his dad. So I called my boss and said, I'm still Louisiana certified. And he stopped me and he said, I'm going to see if I can get you to either ride on the ambulance or do the transfer. Let me make some calls. With a lot of help, things fell into place for an incredible surprise. Who are you? <laughs> hey, buddy. Oh. Oh. As children and adults as we've grown up, he was not emotional. It was an awesome feeling and uh, I was very grateful for the opportunity to get to do that. Will personally transported his dad to the rehab facility where he's recovering day by day. He got his casts off both legs and he's they're getting him up and uh, my niece and nephew, my sisters, my children, they go up there and my sisters every day and see him through the window, you know. He's doing he's doing a lot better. Love you. This story reminds me of my dad. Dad, are you watching this? You're crying, aren't you? From all of us here at Humankind, thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time. <laughs>